keep a steady schedule, I decided to make two quick reviews every other Sunday. Welcome to Quick Double Feature. What these games have in common is that they're in a top-down perspective, and that's pretty much it, really. Rally Simulator was made by Zeppelin Games. Hmm, what else did they made? Oh look, it's actually Technics, the company that some people claim to be the worst game developer ever, just because they only played this. I heard they made good games, but this isn't one of them. The game was released in 1988 for the ZX Spectrum, Commodore 64, and Astra CPC. I'll be playing the Spectrum version, just because. Rally Simulator, all done by one guy. So your objective is to race against four rivals around this maze-like track. Sounds fair enough. The problem is everything else. The controls are all over the place. The fire button doesn't do anything, so to control your car, you use the joystick to accelerate in any direction. Yeah, it's like you're playing with your arrow keys, but ten times worse. The car is very slippery, which can lead you to a lot of crashes, or making any intentional shortcuts. I don't know if the programmer did it on purpose to make it feel like a rally car, but this makes dirt rally feel like Mario Kart! Speaking of crashes, you must avoid as much damage as possible, and also conserve as much fuel as possible. Once the right bar is full, or the left bar is very low, the game is over. But trying not to do that is next to impossible, since you keep fishtailing and crashing most of the time. Then there's the camera that oh my god, it's not locked to the car! As someone who plays Micro Machines or any other decent top-down racing game with 8 degrees of movement or more, this pisses me off! The camera moves behind my car so I don't see what's ahead and it takes quite a long time to move to see what's in front of my car. Like, I know the playing area is small but for fuck's sake just try locking the camera to the car! Graphics wise, the monochromatic display is just a joke. No, not because of the limitations of the system, it's because I can't distinguish the rival cars from mine. Look, they all look the same! At least the developer had a tendency to put colors on different cars on a C64 version, but here, you could have just made the rival cars all black! And the sound? Oh god, my ears! Overall, it sucks. What's with the name? Rally Simulator? It's hardly a simulator. Other than the cover art, the cars don't look like rally cars, or the track doesn't feel like a rally stage. Maybe it should have been called Rally Cross. Oh wait, that's already taken. Hotline Miami, released in 2012, was made by two dudes from Sweden in Game Maker, until another developer remade it to be more stable. So you play as an unnamed person, to which the fans call him Jacket, but one day he receives a voicemail about some cookie delivery, but it turns out to be a mask and a note telling him to kill a group of baddies and steal their case. After that, he gets more messages about killing criminals, although they sound like they're giving you a harmless job so that they won't get suspicious if they're being traced. The story is much more than I explained, but I won't get much into detail. So your job is simple. In general, you must kill every enemy in a building to advance to the next level. Well, it's easier said than done. You see, you need to think strategically in a level, since the enemies are fast and armed. You need to plan ahead quickly, so you won't get shot or be bitten by dogs. You're gonna die a lot in this game, so you need to get used to it. There are weapons throughout the levels, which are divided in two types. Guns are long range and effective, though you can attract enemies when you shoot. While your fists and the melee weapons have a way shorter range, they're silent. Fighting a weapon can be useful as it can knock down your enemies. You can also use doors to your advantage as well. The masks are also a key part of the game. You start out with just a Richard the Chicken mask, but you can earn a mask at the end of the level. Each mask has its own perks like powerful door slams, faster movement, more aiming space, and so on. And every time you reach a score milestone, you earn a new weapon you can pick up. Yes, it uses a point system, and also a rating system which rates to where you clear the level. The game is really challenging yet enjoyable. Yeah, you die a lot, especially in the boss fights, but once you get to the next floor on the level, you get your weapon that you picked up on the last floor back once you're dead. I like the graphics as well. It's pixelated, yet it doesn't shy away with the violence and gore. The music is a bit weird a few times notably inside your apartment, and during those meetings with the three masked people. 
The rest is amazing, full of safe fight goodness. Yeah, some songs are repeated in some levels, but there's some memorable you stop finding them annoying. Overall, it's a fun game. Just be warned, you're gonna die a lot so you can get frustrated all you want.